Here we Everybody go. Guys, can you it? Here's Everybody's pretty excited that we're doing deck work, Doug. I'm glad that you are. <laughs> you are going to glue the plywood to the beam? Yes, sir. Okay. Because the next time you do this deck, yeah. it'll be with a chainsaw. Can tan, yeah. But at least you can come sit here now. <laughs> I don't like sitting. <laughs> What's this uh, brown stuff? That's dolphinite. Dolphinite is, uh, I think it's ground dolphin livers, isn't it? It used to be really good when it had the killer whale in it. Well, we're back at Ventura Harbor Boat Yard, and we're gonna just take a quick moment to check in on our on our spars, on the mast, and on the boom. Actually, this is the mast up here. I can see it, I recognize the, the sheets. And then, if you look under here, you can see the wood color. Oh yeah, she's so pretty. So that's the mast. This must be the mizzen. Oh, that's it, look at this small gear here. You can see that's the mizzen gear. And the boom. Great, looks pretty good. All right, just want to make sure. There you go, thank you guys. They don't know that I'm here. They don't know that I'm here. <laughs> Cyclops. Cyclops. I snuck in on you. Oh, look at these pieces going in. Wow. It's weatherproof. Oh, look at that. Here we go. Getting the bad boy in. <laughs> look at that. So. Ouch. What do we got down here? Mm -hmm. How thick is the teak? Oh, you want we haven't done it yet. So it can be anything we it want. It can be anything you want it to. But, you see our hope is to have it, like you said, an eighth inch or so higher than this. Now, we can take some off the bottom of these all day long. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean That yeah. doesn't mean much. So let's see what we got under there. I, I, I don't agree. know, 5200. See some 45200. Don't tell me. Oh, I must be a psychic. Well, yeah, a quarter inch of 5200, it feels like. Um, or no. You know what? I don't think that's anything. It's just general crap. Yeah. So we'll take it down by the fan, I think. But the whole piece as a whole as a whole is good. Just sand off this this bottom. No, I don't want to sand it. This will sand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is the back like side. A puzzle. Oh, that goes in as a puzzle. Yeah, yeah. that's why we didn't grind any of that. Stuff. Gotcha. And we put the epoxy on there. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I'm saying let's take that stuff off. See what we got under there. And then, um, assuming we have some good timber, we can. Um, is this a little piece you're talking about in here? Yeah, see they had a little, see this height here? Yeah. There was a little piece that ended here and it started there. See where it started? Yeah. And it ended here and started, it was like, eh. Okay, I have to wire you up for that. It's a little loud, we can't really hear. Well, this is about the angle the planks will be coming in. So this one, for instance, will be cut where it ends here inside here. Right. It'll continue going out this way. Good. We'll put this big screw in. Gotcha. Yep. Next right one, here. Yep. see this point here? It'll have to be tapered and fit halfway through. Okay. So that when you look in here, you'll see a piece of teak going this way. Yeah. A piece this way and a piece that way. There'll be all those little planks. He's going to cut that off. Okay, he's going to trim off that piece of metal. It's a good thing he was here because these are really lousy stainless steel. Okay. They had a weld that was, it was a wire weld. It was ground off. It had hairline cracks in it. 
on the metal, on that piece of metal. What is that called? The, the well, I'm going to call it a transom knee. Transom knee, yeah. Um, because basically the half shroud and so forth came off of that. Yeah. Well, these little bolts here aren't enough for that load. There's thousands of pounds on that. So the design is the bolts, and then it went down to the plate on the deck with some big screws, and then it was bolted through here. See this? So that this load was spread all the way across this. Okay. This is important. I need to get this. But you might, but okay. <laughs> this will be good for the B-roll. As soon okay. as you get the 5200 off it. So you have to get the 5200 off that? No, look at it. Oh, remember taking those off? <laughs> so you're going to re retrofit this area so it's going to carry the load, at least as design. Yeah. Back to the design. So Incorporate that hole again? That... Uh-huh. This was okay. It was just too tall okay. because of the old deck. So and with that... the knee being all back here, it was dividing the load pretty good? Yeah. Pretty well. Pretty uh, good. So he's making two new pieces here. Cutting the bottom off of this, bring it here, grind it till it fits. Yeah. And then weld a new piece on the bottom. Which just had big, you know, big screws, number 16 or something. Yeah, so which is funny. Because the, okay. the pull is this way. So you're gonna screw it back into this wood again here or glue it in? No. Bolt it in? Bolt it in. Bolt and screw. Bolt and screw. Okay. And down into this deck piece as well? Yep. Yeah, because that Is looks it? more solid than the transom. Well, it's this thick now. Yeah. Did you remember we made that knee that went yeah, all the way? Yeah, oh, it was beautiful. Okay, so we the knee, the blogging, which is purple heart. Yeah. And our new piece. So under there, we can go back and look at the video. Yeah, it's, it's amazingly solid under there. But we'll be able to see it when you remove this piece, right? Right. Maybe we'll take one final look at it. So when will this piece of subflooring be uh, going in permanently? A week or two. Okay. Our biggest thing, as you'll see in a minute, is up here up forward, okay. laying this out. Okay. We're on the air with Doug. Yeah. Okay. Second. Uh, tenth. Tenth. Ninth. Ninth. Yeah. Tenth. Ninth or no, it's the tenth. So, anyway, this. Fucking deck. We're up on top. We're doing deck work. Don't here we go. Guys, can you believe it? Here's Everybody's pretty excited <laughs> that we're doing deck work, Doug. I'm glad that you are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, these are the old winch pads, which we're going to reuse. Uh, and this is a 5 8 piece of wood. We'd like our decking to be 3 quarters as much as possible. That is, 3 quarters above the quarter inch plot. Anyway, so not really clear on how they did this. But they're back where they belong, temporarily. You can see that the it's over a quarter inch out here. But it won't go back here it slides in <laughs> wow so what we're going to do when we get this screwed down where it can't move anymore we're going to take a block and we're going to scribe around this a three quarter inch block all the way around on both sides port and starboard and then plane and grind that off to where it fits back in this position with comfortably as you know we we put solid blocking all through this area to spread the loads of these winches, yeah. um, which, as I'll admit, it's a little bit overkill, but some of these beams weren't in the best of shape, and they had these little skinny blocks underneath, if you remember. Yeah. So rather than cobble all that back together, we just spanned the whole thing with some uh, fur or cedar blocking, and now it's, there's no question that it's pretty strong and we didn't really add any significant weight. Before the deck is put down, we scribed them to where a three quarter inch piece of wood was just go underneath there. Gotcha. Maybe not. That way, with a little bit of sanding, and we know, then, uh, then we know these will go back in in no time at all without wasting a bunch of time, taking them in and out and guessing. Okay. But we can't do any of that until this is screwing wood down. But Are we you just ready to screw all these boards down We're now? getting closer every minute. This, we laid out this 50 foot tape for our plank schedule. And we've marked it with tape every five feet all the way along the margin board. So there's no guesswork. And what's that telling us? That's 40 feet to the bow from here. Right. It's five foot 11 to the stern back here. Okay. 
So we'll, we'll know if I'm standing on this side of the boat and he's over there, I go, hey, you got an eight foot piece? Right. We'll number the frames so that when we're on either side of the cabin, we can talk to each other frame by frame, just like we did on the hull. Okay. We, we, we numbered so all these are there. the same marks you'll have on both sides? You only need on this side. Okay. But you want them to, to pan out the same on both sides? Yeah, it's not necessary, but it saves a lot of layout. Yeah, and you'd also like in the back it to come in even. Well, now back here it's got to be really clean because, see, if you're on that side deck, yeah. you can't see this deck. No. So if we have a butt that's two frames off, one side or the other, it makes no difference structurally, and you won't be able to see it. They'll end up being the same, but uh, it's kind of like hole planking. You make all the planks the same on each side. That way your layout's minimal, and uh, wherever you can, and of course on this boat we were able to do that on every frame. Anyway, so to fasten this down, you can see these the rabbit in the margin board here. Yeah. Is very small. It's barely five eighths thick. Oh, it's I see thickness. When mm, you're yeah. At. And for the most part, we were able to salvage that. There were a few repairs we had to make, where there was some rot or whatever. Um. So the plywood six millimeter, which is basically a quarter of an inch. So we had to order these little screws, special. Okay. Number ten by three three quarters, so they don't poke through. Gotcha. Along this one, uh, on this right. margin board. Along the perimeter. And in the same screw, but an inch long, into the beams and whatnot to hold the ply down. Now these screws aren't much more than a, a baby clamp because we're going to glue the plywood to the beams. You are going to glue the plywood to the beams? Yes, sir. Okay. Because the next time you do this deck, yeah. it'll be with a chainsaw. <laughs> okay, because we're going to make it to where you don't have to do it again. So these will just, we'll pull most of these out probably. Because you got to remember that the teak decks, every two inches, there's going to be a big screw going through the teak, the plywood, and into the beam. So you don't put them all in, all the ones that you planned on putting in, you won't actually put one in every hole here? Oh yeah. Oh, you will. This, these are basically to hold the plywood tight down while the glue dries overnight. Right. And we'll leave some of them in. We'll certainly leave all the perimeter ones in. Gotcha. But you will take some of them out? These. The ones that are laying on top of the cross beam, just so you don't take any chance that you hit them. Yeah, because you know, if you're drilling a teak plank that's sprung under pressure <laughs> and your countersink hits that hole, an empty hole. Yeah. Oh, it'll go through that and it'll go spin, split. Or so you're if you hit. You'd rather go through an empty hole than through a hole with with, with, with a screw with in it. With a screw on. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. So if you take any of these out where you you're pretty sure a cheap plank screw is gonna go, mm -hmm. you just put a toothpick with some epoxy. In. Okay, so you'll fill them. Yeah. So that you don't have that. Mostly Sudden. you're screwing all these down, mostly just to hold it, the glue in place. That's it. Okay. You can see around the perimeters of our new hatch frames and everything. Yeah. Mizzen partner, which is Purple Heart. So you got to be careful putting the screws in there. They have lots of wax on them. They'll snap. Really? Yep. Um, because Purple Heart is very unforgiving when it comes to the depth and size of the screw hole. You have to pre-drill the holes. Oh, all of them you do. Even on, these are all pre-drilled. This piece was put in last week, put this in last Friday, right, because it goes more. underneath this an inch or more. It couldn't be put in in one piece, you see what I mean? Yeah. So it was put in in two pieces. Right. It was built in one piece, but... Well, no, you had to cut it and fit each side. Okay. Um, the high field lever goes here. Okay, and then that stainless flange goes here. Okay. So this joint will only be seen by people that are looking for it, that know it's there. It's gonna be about this long. It doesn't matter, it's a nice joint, you gotta admit. Right. Yeah, well that's underneath a piece of metal and the whole yeah. deck and sub deck. No, the, no. And even if it wasn't, see it'll varnish out nice. Nice. So it's nice, nice. fit. Yeah, beautiful. But this right. is about- This is margin board after all, basically. Right. This is your. Stern margin board. This part of the boat here is three inches thick, roughly. That's beautiful. 
very strong. Yeah. That's where, but that's where all the load of the back stays and everything is going too. Right. And you remember the knee we made? And the knee, yeah. So this basically is another knee. And then, of course, the stainless knee that we talked about that Keith is going to cut down and have to refit because the deck used to... See how it is now? Perfectly flat. It used to go like this back here. Right. It used to go... <laughs> yeah. What about our drain holes? Well, the drain holes um, can go pretty much anywhere you want them to. Yeah, we need drain holes. As soon as we get this fit... Yeah. And we know where, the, where we can do it, that's where we're going to do it. Okay. Very good. Now, depending on how the boat sits in the water, it might be a good idea to put those drains in after you've been launched. <laughs> right, we see where it goes. Well, yeah, I mean, you can use the hillbilly method. You know, you just throw a quart of water back here, measure the deepest hole. All right, well, hey, that's Because not a we're not idea. sure. I'm looking at the boat thinking it doesn't need them. I think it needed them because it had sagged. Right. See, this is going seriously downhill right now, but and so is the boat. Okay. This should you be. You think it's going to drain right towards the scuppers? Yeah, because this should be slightly up, uphill when the boat's sitting on its water line. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This, your your stern deck should slightly go uphill, not straight right. and not right. down. Yeah. No, but when you Something. start going, it starts sinking in the back. Well, two things on there, yeah. Just from the The speed. sagging deck and maybe the boat wasn't loaded right and other things. Yeah. I don't know. No, we'll find out, right? But we'll have it, a new way of sailing, that's for sure. But wait till it's sitting in the water and you yeah. may just go, I don't need all those stupid drains. Yeah. Let's, sit a little, uh, yeah. let's go take a look at the bow. He's been sitting, working up here for a while, working on the king plank. Well, what we did is last week and a half, two weeks, is Clint down below doing all that settee stuff? Yeah. We'll and me it. up here. That what? Because we're gonna go take a look at the settee right. stuff. Right. Because see, two guys down there. Yeah. Especially when one of the guys is Doug. And then the other guy is Dave. Oh, Three okay. guys. Dave. Good. Yeah. So we got rid of Dave. We said, hey, come back when we call you. <laughs> Don't call us. We'll call you. So, we're gonna, okay, we'll it's a one look. man job. So I'm. I came up starting on the deck while he's doing all that. Great. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay, the king, king plank wow. is screwed and epoxied in. Done wow. deal. Wow. And what we were working Beautiful, out though. now is the uh, the plank nibs. We never had the, uh, the original king plank didn't have any under piece like this, did it? Yeah. It did? Well, <laughs> sort of. Not the, okay. They really did it the hard way, but it was amazing. They, it was a... Uh, I'll just say it. It was European. It was done. How easy. That was, was, you said that's socialism. Uh, well, no, they do things very strange over there. You know? Yeah. It's not just country to country. It's mile per mile. There'll be one guy here doing this thing. Sure, sure. And half it's a like mile. It's like spaghetti sauce. It's different <laughs> everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, right, so take us through what you got here. So what we've done is an American. American version. American version. The king plank sits under the plywood deck, okay. making the leaks less likely. And okay. the plywood deck goes over, then the teak sits on top of that. And then the actual real king plank, the one you see, sits on top of everything. Okay. It's not just window dressing, it's part of the structure, but it's not buried in this big rabbit down here. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, so that, we, we have all that done. Um, we can pull this out, Clint. That claw this hammer. Is so this is all fit in. This Perfect. is done. It's in. And then these stri strips represent teak strips. It's like yes, we were. Uh, we were. Kind of like you can see this piece right here. It doesn't have a very good curve on it. It kind of goes. See it? Yeah, right into there. Well, when you when the, when we bend our piece of teak in, we're gonna have to. Custom fitted in there. Uh, we got something. Pull this little nail. Oh, the hammer right oh. there. Hey, what a concept! So, we can pull out two pieces of ply, please. Right behind you here. Got oh. Trade places. This is our um, jig we made a year and a half ago. 
of the original big one. Okay. And you can see this is how the nibs come in. Yeah? Yeah. And the next one comes in like this. And we were goofing around down here to see how radical they were getting. Okay. It's basically about five eighths to three quarters nib down to zero at the edge of the king plank. Gotcha. It's not consistent, it goes down to zero. Right, in other words, this one, see how crazy that angle is? Right. That's because up here, this is tapered and this is coming. So this is only good for right here. Okay, right. That's all we use it for. Gotcha. Each plank varies in that you come in three quarters and wherever the plank goes to zero, that's where you cut the nib. Gotcha. All right. Okay. How's that, how's that look? So it's a bigger, bigger, thin, thin, thin to no nib. At the end, it's just running straight up. No, they'll, they'll all have nibs. They'll all have nibs. Just that, that last one or two are going to be you know, pretty short. They're gonna okay. be. <laughs> nice. Okay. Let's see how that will look. Yeah, they'll be coming in like this. <clears throat> Actually, wow. Five eighths more. Yeah, like that. But it'll be paralleling that line over there. Gotcha. It's kind of hard to read. So that, that line is kind of like ground zero? <laughs> this line? Water, the, 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 it, it, dead inside there? Sort of. It relates to this line. It does relate. Okay. Well, remember we had to recut all these? Yeah. So that was the idea to keep those all consistent so they're all running straight up here? Yeah, and we left a little bit of extra out here um, just because you always do. And See, this is 14 inches. This represents seven planks wide. Okay. And this one is 16 inches. It represents eight planks wide. You see how it comes to this point here? Yeah. So this plank will flow along here. Uh, now, this is a straight edge, so it doesn't look right, but right. it's be curving like that, we think. <laughs> so what you do is you go up to about here, with your available material. Those are two very important words. Available material. 2016. Yeah. And then you adjust this. It's all about this right here. You see this mark we made? So you're saying you could trim off a piece of that? Yeah, it's how much we think we're going to have to trim off. Oh, I see. Wow. Okay. That's that little mark there. Mm -hmm. So you think you're going to have to trim that off? Right, and if you slide these on back down the deck, you can see, see this plank here? Yeah. It'll be about five eighths to three quarters wide right there. You can see how it begins to taper out here. Yeah. So by the time it gets to this next nib, it's about an inch and five eighths, okay. inch and three quarters. And it continues on. Now that is five eighths or so. And then this plank continues on until you get down to here at the next nib where we're just under four inches. So it's two there. Right. So this plank here will now be about inch and three quarters wide. This one will be two inches wide. See that? So you're adjusting that inner one as you go. Yeah. These are, this is pretty much six, and then you've got seven, and then wait, seven, and eight, and then nine wide. Right. But it's wide. So that you can see that as they pick up each nib, yeah. this plank is almost as wide as it's supposed to be. Okay. Yes. And the same here. You don't make it wider. You don't have to. You don't have to. Now, when it gets down to here, you can see. Same thing, it's about inch and three quarters here, or inch and five eighths. Right. And then it's only like three quarters here. At that nib, and that's the last one. So that when you look at the deck, it's like nothing so looks good. Cool. Here is you're gonna actually have a third one. Right, and now when you get down to here. And that nib is gonna be a fourth one actually in here. It starts right in here. Yeah. And here's the here's the 
Right in here is the widest part of the deck. Okay. See where it says GG? Yeah. In boat talk? Yeah. What's GG? Greatest girth. Greatest girth. Okay, so it's you have not, the, the first piece, which was seven, plus eight, eight nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven. Now, at this fattest part, this point here now. Look at that, it's two and a quarter. It's still two and a quarter, so it's actually a little wider than everything. Mm -hmm. So do you go with one, another two, and then a little baby thin one, oh, or no, a no. slightly wider one? No, no, you just go two and a quarter. Okay. So you and can then that'll taper back out. Well, here's another thing that happens. This plank's two and a quarter, but it's going to have a rabbit on this edge and on the inner edge. Eighth inch rabbit. Okay. So you'll only be seeing two inches of the wood. So you're saying there's a rabbit on each piece of plank? On that one. Just that. You, you, have to, you have to cut a rabbit onto every... So you basically make a tongue and groove piece? No, it's just a little rabbit, eighth inch wide, three, six, three eighths deep or so. Okay. <coughs> and you start out here. All the rabbits are on this side. So that when you get to this plank here, even though it's two and a quarter wide here, it's going to have an eighth inch rabbit either side, so the actual wood you'll be looking at is only two inches. That you're looking at, but yeah. it'll have a. Right, so you on won't the know. bottom side, it'll be two and a quarter. But I won't tell anybody if you won't. No, but so. how do you fit it in there? You slide it in? Oh, it's a pain. Pain in the ass, okay. No, this plank usually has to be sawn instead of bent. You don't have a shutter plank in this case. No, which I wish we did. <laughs> but this plank here, even though it's pretty wide, It'll bend a little bit, but don't forget, it starts getting narrower right away. Right away, yeah. So as you get up to where it really bends, you can see now it's under two inches, inch sure. and three quarter. And, and, and closing down fast. And up there it's only three quarter. So really the only strain is right in here. Strain being a relative term. You see it? All right, beautiful. Probably in two weeks we'll be seeing <coughs> a lot of this sub uh, subage. The subage all down. I think so. While we were getting ready to mill some teak today. Well, let's take a look at that. <coughs> we looked at our inventory, <coughs> and one of the reasons we laid out what we did on the other side is because you know it's not like the hull. The butts, in terms of strength, aren't nearly as important as the hull. Especially if you have a plywood subdeck, right? Because then the plywood subdeck acts like a 45-foot-long butt block, sure. quarter-inch thick. So, but it's sooner or later it comes to appearance. Hey, come on, this way. And because the boat's fairly narrow, it doesn't have a lot of curve except right down in the belly down there. Right. And it's not too bad. You remember those sample pieces we did about a year or so ago? Sample pieces of? Teak. We clamped them up to test them. Mm, I don't remember. You don't remember that? Okay. But, um, Maybe I wasn't here. Yeah, we showed them to you, but okay. it, was, it wasn't that exciting. <laughs> so, a good example would be here. This is a really straight line. Only has maybe a half inch curve in it from here up. So we can take a short plank and put the butt here on this wide beam. Okay. So it's five foot two, see it? Yeah. And the next one can go, our longest pieces are 14, oh, nice. eight or something. So if you're five feet here and you go back 14 feet, we'll all be right in here. This one right here? Somewhere in here we can put a butt. Okay. And you'll need to make a butt block. No, because... Because it's underneath the plywood. Yeah, I mean... It, it, this boat has pretty small deck beams. They're trying to keep yeah. the weight down, I get it. So, right here, you got the plywood on here. So you can butt your teak here. And hit the beam like this. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So 20... Let's say we have another plank coming back to here somewhere, another 12 feet or so. Right. Um, be back in here somewhere, you know. And this is the distance to the stern. 
That's to the bow and that's right. to the stern. That way when we're laying this stuff out, we don't have to keep breaking out tape measures. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So we know it's 16, we don't have anything that long. And from the 20, we know we've got 12, so we'll be in here somewhere okay. with our third plank on that course. And then we can go all the way to the stern with that one. And there's other things you can do too, like here. Yeah. Underneath these. Yeah. Since they're solid blocking, we can put butts under here and hide them. Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? It's easy to get to. It's right mm -hmm. underneath there. And this won't go on until the deck. I thought there were some blocks underneath there. They're a little three quarter inch. <laughs> Okay. Now, I thought you put new ones under there. Oh yeah, ours are, ours are full thickness. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, they're full thickness, plus they have a plate yeah. like we did on the bow. So that any load that's on here, you forget about it. You don't have to worry about it. You're going to break the line. You break the line. And it was mainly to do that and to strengthen this part of the boat. Because see, there's no deck beams here that go all the way across. Right. No. There's only three right here. So this part of it would be nice to have this strong. Your next main beam is over here. Yeah, there's our new one, right? This is yep. Big got them bolted in the other day. Oh, God, beautiful. <coughs> Definitely they're toe busters. We, uh -huh. we all hit our toes on those many, many times. Okay. We got so. the 5 8 bolts. You see them sticking out? Okay. There was a block over there that was rotten. We had to make a new one. On the, for the one on the other side. Yeah, and then we had to drill a hole that long. Let's see, there's the old block there. The new block we put on that side. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, those are the new bolts. I those the bolts. Well, we reused the old bolts. Okay, they were in good shape. shape. Weird yeah. They used to get it in. Well, see, they're threaded into the bodies here. Okay. See where we're going with that? What could go wrong with that? Saying the um, the bolts were threaded into the into this body about an inch. Okay. The body of the cleat. Oh, I see. I see. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that they were solid. But how do they get them to stop? Exactly. Well, you screw <laughs> them in from the underside, right, to keep them tight, but you can't. No. <laughs> so you had to glue so, them in. Uh, amidst great clamor and preparation and cursing, I think you said darn it once or twice. Darn. You think you said darn it? Uh, you put the nut on, see? Yeah. And nothing happens. So you... I mean, you screw the nut on, it just spins. <laughs> the bolt's turning while you're trying to put the nut on. And so you keep putting the nut on. itself right out of the housing? So then you take the wrench and you start tightening the nut, and the bolt continues to turn, and then the bolt stops turning, and the nut starts tightening, but it's not far enough in this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do? Well, you grab it with vice grips, back it out, and start over again. So were you able to unscrew the bolt from the housing? Yeah, you got it all the way out? Not all of them. Okay. Well, there's always one that doesn't come out. It's the last one. It's always the last one. So no, up there, back there we had to take the grinder and cut three quarters off or something. It was too long. And of course, being stainless, the, the threads were galled in a couple of places. But uh, I know you, you wouldn't have put them all back together if they weren't okay. No, they're fine. It's just that uh, this now I see this another... Seated. What's this uh, brown stuff? That's dolphinite. Dolphinite. Do we trim that away afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, and the, it's made these from... these pieces here, is, are they in decent shape? Yeah. Dolphinite is... Uh, they need to be polished up, this stuff? It's a product. It's, it, I think it's ground dolphin livers. <laughs> Isn't it? It used to be really good when it had the killer whale in it. One of the good things that happened the last week or so in digging out those mooring cleats, we were able to refresh our memory and find some of the old hardware. Not find it, it was all in a box. Right. But where does this go? I don't know, where does that go? So we got a lot of that done too. Because yeah. when you're doing planking, it's a whole set of tools and ideas. When you're doing interiors, that's all gone. It doesn't mean anything. Then when you come up on the deck, you start it with a whole new mindset. So you can see we're okay. yeah, making big progress. Moving there. along. You can see the lights on the underside here. These are some new lights that Dave put in. Oh yeah, that's for the four peak. And the oh, and these are the uh, foot switches for the windlass. Okay. So we'll put them about right here, basically in the middle of this bay. Okay. So we put the plywood sub deck down. 
I drilled this size hole here. Yeah. And then that way we don't have to worry about the teak. Once we put the teak down, we can um, drill up and so forth. Or you can simply just know that you want to put it right here. And, and wait you basically to, have to drill down through the teak. Wait right. till everything's on and just take a two and a half or whatever that is hole saw right. and drill through everything. Oh, how horrible. That's horrible. So we'll drill. <laughs> Why don't we get wireless? <laughs> yeah, really. So we don't have to have a foot switch. That's horrible. You have that thing in the cockpit, you know. Okay, well, then why do we need this? Well, in case you're not in the cockpit. Yeah. You might be up here. But you could bring it out through the hatch or like a wireless or a wired thing. A little remote thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't drill anything in the deck. We'll see what we can do there. Okay, going down below to see what has been going on down here for the last couple of weeks. Wow, yeah. we are really cleaned up down here. Just putting it all back together. Wow. It's all reframed underneath. Wow. Got the box for the water maker temporarily and screw in place okay, right so now. Okay, so that's all been painted. And but I mean, this stuff is not, wow, well, it was not like that there wasn't all, much. Huh? There wasn't much framing to do in this one. Um, I built some new new cleats and reestablished some lines because a lot of this stuff was just loose and all over the place. That looks really nice and clean. And then what do we got under here? This is just another storage spot. More the storage. It was under there. So. And again, now we're not looking down into the bilge anymore. No. We can actually put some stuff in there. Absolutely. Put a little wine rack or something. Nice. A little dusty down there, but yeah. Perfect. Also, this whole corner right here has been reestablished. Yes, look at that. There was That's just, a whole new piece. I remember it was all. And this was. Apart. Remember how loose the bulkhead for the oh, engine yeah, was. That. That we started there and just kind of worked here. So this is all. See all new bolts in there. Yeah. There's some blocking under here. You can't really. See. You might be able to shine your camera under there. There's a. We had to put a knee in here to catch this. So this is solid again. So there's some new stuff under here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. There's a block right here. We did. Okay. There was nothing there. They just had it. Uh, piece of one by or something. Really, this is, really funny. This was reinstalled, this piece here? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. It's on the back and then the, it's kind of dusty in there right now, but these are the old shelves. We just put those back. Yeah, painted that's where them. I used to hide my stuff back in there. <laughs> just painted them, gave them a quick paint job and yeah. put them back for now. And then what's that piece there? Where, where's this that piece from? right here is the front rail here. Oh, the face. But I'm not going to put that on until the holding tanks dialed in. Gotcha. Yeah, that holds the cushion in there. Yeah, yeah. that holds the cushion in. Great. Beautiful. Put that dialed in. And this side here was really, since we put the uh, little bulkhead there for the new fridge, we shortened this area. Yeah, we shortened eight that. inches or more. Yeah, that's where the tall people used to put their feet under there. And then this. No more tall people. Sorry, These all Jerry. had to be modified. These are all coming apart, or? They were just, when I put this back together, Yeah. Look at that. Remember how flimsy everything was? Oh, yeah. When I put everything back together, squared it up, it just made so these were a little bit sticky, so we... Oh, nice. But all the framing, the it was all old and crappy, so this yeah. is all beautiful and stuff. I, I kept some of the framing. Some of the pieces, like these drawer slides right here, these are original, but like this one here, it had a nail. Oh, yeah, the longitudinal. So I put this a new cross piece there to carry that. Get gotcha. that back in. I put some more screws in here. So these are good. Um, yeah, that's original. This is all new. That, but it's all it's oh, solid man. now. It's solid. I mean? No creaking. This back. The whole boat used to creak. And there's blocking under the shelf to get this back. And I mean, if you can feel that, see yeah. how solid it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, this piece we don't doesn't doesn't raise up. When this gets installed, we don't get behind there. You mean under here? You get under there, yeah. Yeah. But the one here on this side has yeah, the piece yeah. that flips up if we reinstall it the same way. Yeah, and, and it gives you access to that right here. Yeah, yeah. So we brought this down just so we could check things as we're going. Great. How's but it looking? It looks good. But just reestablishing this here, because these pieces right here they weren't flowing. They're all. Oh, and you know again, I mean? creaking and creaking and... Because one was down low, one was up high, so nothing sat. So what I did is I 
basically got a straight edge on here, so those are all kind of flow. You can see they just flow in, you know, when you put the Trust me, that's so important because you know what? This is after we stop sailing, this is where we are. We live in here. Yeah, so right? And this would be solid. We've got all it's kinds of enough. people, shapes and sizes. It's gotta be uh, solid. Fits back in there fairly they numbered them all too, they weren't numbered. So. <laughs> This one had to be cut down later. Yeah, just back there. See, so, you know, it had a notch in it, but it had like eight more inches on here. So right. I put a new cleat back there. All right. And then, uh, oh, yeah. To... Beautiful. I mean, you can see everything. <laughs> All right, so it looks like, yeah, you're, you're finishing up here, this area. Yeah, this is for the new fridge. So we installed this this morning. We'll be able to finish our uh, planking from below here. But all right, so this is actually now fi final installation? Yeah, it's ready to go. Ready to go or it gone? Ready. No, it's in. It's in, yeah, okay. it's in. No more gluing? No. Okay, good. No, we didn't glue, in fact, we didn't glue this or this, just okay. in case. Right, so it doesn't need to be glued. No, right? no, this is all glued. Right, this but if you ever needed to get that. the refrigerator out? Well, the refrigerator is gonna come out, like boom, okay. boom. But I mean, if you ever had to get down here, which we don't ever like to close everything, any place off in the boat. No, so you can unscrew it. So it's unscrewable. It. It's not glued in. Okay. The stuff that counts is glued. Okay. Then, so what's left to do down here? What are you still doing little jobs around here? We have a cabinet that goes right here. Yeah. Uh, it's almost, it's 90% done. It just has to be varnished and a couple of little things uh, dialed in. Okay. And then the top's done. The lids, all the doors and stuff are done. Are there more ceiling ceiling planks to go along the back yes, here? Yes, ceiling planks are going to go all the way across. So. We're gonna okay. put a couple of cleats in and middle of the ceiling Finish plank those. stock. Okay. And then install those. All right, very good. Uh, yeah, we'll be back in a right couple here. of weeks. It's huge and I can, I can get out of here. It just right feels now. like yeah, like you're done in here, huh? For the most part. I can't speak for any of those other drawers, but this one here was just completely delaminated. I just okay. I glued it up yesterday. Yeah, the, these are just cabinet doors. Yeah, those are the push button. Yeah. Great. We'll wait on that till the day puts that tank in. Right. And we have some new colored cushions. These are not the colors. You guys figure Going out. more with brown and black and tan. Black and tan, yeah. But at least you can come sit here now. <laughs> I don't like sitting. <laughs> All right, first we're taking a look at, at one of the uh, drawers from the saloon. Yeah. This hasn't been cleaned up yet, but I, de I uh, it was all delaminated. Three layers here, just all the way to about right here. Spread it open, re-glued it. Okay. So. I'll try to save it. Oh yeah, it'll it's savable for sure. Great. A little bit of sanding and. Uh, Great. That's what good. keeps it. Got to keep it real. But it's. Now it's solid. It's solid again. again. It's not yeah. <laughs> Look how beautiful the fronts were. <laughs> Somebody repaired that a while back. It looks like. Mm. Crack there. Yeah, that's too bad. Can really see that. Yeah. Welcome to Teak Talk. This is Burmese Teak. Okay. And you can see, um, you see how fine this grain is? See okay. it? Yeah. I mean, some places there's 30 rings per inch or more. Wow. In fact, this one here, you can't count them. That's good, right? That's what you're looking for. If you turn it 90 degrees, uh, you can't see it too good, it's rough, but this is flat grain. Okay. You don't ever want flat grain facing the sky because it will lift, it'll warp, it'll cut. Okay. You want vertical grain, that is the grain's going this way. Okay. Also known as quarter sawn. Okay. Um, in the bow and stern areas. So how many, how many pieces could you make out of something this thick if you're using it this way? Well, like this is like three inches wide. Yeah. So you're talking um, three-quarter inch teak, for instance. Well, you're going to lose an eighth or so with a table saw. So three, 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 boards. maybe four, okay. if you're lucky. Okay. 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 And how do you cut that using what kind of saw? Table saw. With the table saw. What you do is this is looking straight down at the grain. This is what you want to see when you're walking on the deck. Okay. So you run it through the saw this way, and you gotcha. slab it off. Gotcha. Now a good example would be right here. Uh, you see this right here? 
these defects. Oh, how it arches up here? Well, the, see that coloration there, that yeah. sapwood? Yeah. You don't want that, so we'll slab it off from this side. See how beautiful that is? That looks good. And then whatever waste comes off so of there. So that's what we're seeing on the deck. That's what you want to see. But I don't like this, like... You don't like what? That's the, beautiful. What, the, this little color in there? That's oh, good. Okay. That's gorgeous. Okay. Um, I mean, I've seen pieces of teak that look just like this. <laughs> in fact, this one's close to it. But you're always going to have these different colors in teak. That's silicone sand. Okay. It's very hard on blades, so when you run it through the table saw, a lot of times you'll see sparks come out of it. Teak is very rough on tools. It's easy to work with. It's not very hard like purple heart, but it's it'll take the edge off a plane or a chisel in before you know it. You don't know it's happening because it's just got little tiny rocks in it. It's like glass. Where's our teak pot? Oh, uh, well, there's a bunch under here. We selected these three pieces because of their thickness. Make three or four slabs each. Yeah, you got nine planks here. You have me. This would represent uh, almost two courses on one side. Okay. Now, there's other things you, you look for too. You don't just go cutting your teak up. You see how this piece has a hook down at the end? Uh, yeah. See that hook? Okay. We like that or we don't like it? We like that because if you're gonna if you're gonna use this full length. It would just make it easier to bend. Oh, okay. But up in the bow and back in the stern, there's some pieces this long that have to bend. Okay. And they don't like to bend. <laughs> so if you save these, set them aside um, for those areas of short planks, okay. you got something going for you. Otherwise, you got nothing going for you. Same with this piece. You see this knot here? Okay. And we got some swirly poos down there. Yeah. Well, there's some planks in the stern and up on I mean, the this bow area. This little dip there. Well, yeah, like this stuff. Yeah. This, this will raise in the sunlight. You don't want that because it's basically that you're, what you're seeing is the grain going up like this. Okay. But we can use this piece and get three of them. For something. For those little short ones that are in the transom and in the bow. Right. Okay. And this piece here, we go from here has a pretty good hook that way. So it can be used as a four footer. You know, it's not. So you can get three, four footers out of this piece. Well, just out of this side. Now you flip it over, see it's all good. Oh, okay. So the knot doesn't start till about halfway down. So. Okay, so you can see where it starts getting rough. Right, so we'll take a long plank out of here and then set it aside. Okay. To 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 That's use nice. it later for and this. Evaluating each time you cut it. Exactly. So you have to cut them, tape them, and mark them where you want them to go. Set them aside, and then um, use them later. Okay. Now, you asked about the teak pile. Teak pile. The these three pieces. They wouldn't do two courses, but they do one and a half on one side of the boat. Now the wider pieces, we get five or six of them out of it. See them? Uh -huh. Okay. And these are 14s and 13s and, and so forth. Okay. This one's 14.7, which is a nice long piece. Um, and they are they're under here. <sighs> so, uh, so that's a good amount of wood. Uh huh. Well, that's not all we have. But let's say you always use worst case scenario because you're going to run into some funny spots in the wood. You're going to have waste from the table saw and the planer and so forth. Let's say that you can get three pieces out of each one of these. Right. That's 45 pieces. Okay. It's more like 50. So if How many do we need? <laughs> well, if you're using four pieces per course, yeah. you think about it. And we got like nine. Well, you got like... Uh, Eighteen. Well, in full length courses, you only have seven. Okay, so, so seven times four is 28 times two. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, the middle bits. So and you have like those down there. Like 70. 
We'll call it 56, plus you have another, we'll say 10 down there, is 66. Then we come over here. There's another 30 at least there. So we got almost 100 pieces. This is probably about close to what we'll need. All right. These now you could almost legally call these boards, even though they're called deck planks. There's no boards on a boat, but they're basically that. Because a hull plank is very three-dimensional. It has curve, twist, taper, and even shape, you know? Yeah. It has a, it has a, a teak deck planks are two-dimensional. They lay flat. They're basically made out of machine. And then the little corner pieces and whatnot are custom fitted, so they're still called planks. Well, you have to make a, a bevel on each one for the... Uh, right, for the, that uh, you do with a table rabbit. saw. All this is done with machinery, basically. Well, let's see, let's cut one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll just go crazy here. Yeah, when do you think you would start? We can cover, no, we can cover right now. Uh, we'll cut that one with the knots in it. Okay. To get rid of the knots. So you set that about two and a quarter high and a, mm, yeah, strong 13 sixteenths or something. Just over three quarter. Okay. These are all about, as you say, three inches wide. And a little over two inches thick. Right, which the thick is going to be our new width. Exactly. So we're going to cut the part out with the knot in it. Okay. And see how, you see how the knot goes down into here? Yeah. We know that's got to go, so we're going to cut it anyway. And then we'll see how it clears up. Okay. It's about two and a half there. We got two and a half? Okay. Now see how it, it sprung even more when we cut it? Say again? See how it sprung even more when we cut it? What did it mean sprung? This way. Oh, okay, it started curving. That's very That's desirable. the grain is pulling it one way? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, these big heavy trees, when they're alive and in the ground, they're, they're very heavy. Right. And just to stand up in a windstorm, sure. they have to have a powerful root system, and the tree itself has to be very strong. So when you cut that tree down, there's a lot of power left in that tree. Tension. It, tension. Yeah. So the smaller you cut the pieces, the more they begin to relieve themselves. And so it'll go the way that tree wanted to go back when it was still okay. living. So, so how, do you, how do we like that and not like that? I like this. In other words, it's about what we expected. You see the knot? Okay. Yeah, on one and side. And these swirls. Okay. The knot's gone in our new piece. Pretty much. See it down there? That's that is a bit of it. See, it's a swirl, but it's not bad. That's almost acceptable. This is nice when you see the, the raw edge, I see. Now. You can see how it doesn't go all the way out. Right. It doesn't leave the wood. And then we you take a look at this, remember those swirls we had down here? See these? They're gone. They're gone here. Yeah. So we got rid of the knot. We still have about a five foot piece that's very usable down here, okay. which has some hook built into it. Would you it. use this side or would you use the other side? Doesn't matter, because it's all clear. Doesn't matter. And we have a nice little piece here for up on the bow or the stern, okay. and a nice piece here. And this piece is for plugs. <laughs> for plugs, right. <laughs> but boy, you love to see these curved pieces like this. I mean, even the long pieces that we have. Because that helps with the, the natural curve of right. the boat. Yeah. And the long pieces aren't difficult to bend, but any help you can get. Sure. Now this fresh cut here, by this time tomorrow, it'll be kind of an orange color. Okay. Because teak, when it oxidizes, kind of turns an orange color. And you can tell the quality of teak by not only the grain, see how tight it is? And this is by far not our best piece. But, but you can see how many 
Yeah, there's at least 30 odd rings per inch in this. So that's plenty good. 16 being what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah so we can see that really, really tight grain. And like I say, this is not our best piece by far, but it's very good, very acceptable. Awesome. In two weeks we should, uh, yeah, we should be planking this thing for sure. I mean, we've got another day or so between now and Friday to lay out. We'll, probably tomorrow we'll fit the forward two panels. Um, of the sub deck? Mm -hmm. yeah. Pre-drill them. Um, I guess just start working. See, there's, not, there's no more work to be done up in the bow. So as a matter of fact, we can probably just put those in. But what we were talking about earlier today was to before we put the actual sub deck down, yeah. while you still have bare deck beams and timbers, right. we'll, we'll mill a bunch of this stuff out and start clamping it in place to see how it's going to do in relationship to fasteners and so forth. Gotcha. We have to mark all of our fasteners along the margin board uh, with blue tape so that we don't hit them. That, that is the deck beam fasteners and bolts. Because sure. the little sub deck fasteners, we're just going to take them out if they're in the way. Okay. Once the glue dries, there'll be a thousand large screws holding that plywood down by the time the teak goes in. Wow. Yeah. Well, you figure 10 per frame. And there's 50 frames right. <laughs> per side. Yeah. That's uh, 500 per side, then you got a little over a thousand, probably 12, 12 to 1300 screws holding that deck down. And then, and then, of course, like we talked about earlier, when we get the sub deck down tight to stay, right. then we'll scribe the winch pads, okay. cut them, and before we put the deck on, we'll put some sample pieces on the deck, okay. set them on there, where we're really happy with it, where it's maybe a sixteenth too high to leave us a little bit for sanding. So. Hopefully we'll see that when we come back in two weeks and we'll see some deck planks down. We should. Or at least, as you say, ready to receive them, laying them out. We got a couple, maybe two, three days of milling. Of the, of the actual? The, the, the teak. And, and it's not just milling, it's, um, we have to collate it. This goes here. We'll save this for the bow, you know right, what I mean? Right. This one's All 11 foot. Well. Like the, let's say there's one that's 11 foot eight. It'll reach from this beam to that beam. Don't cut it. Don't use it for a 10 footer. And then, and then of course the scraps that we end up with, because you will have scraps. We'll be using those for the floorboards inside, remember? Yep, we, got the we, we didn't put any teak on them yet because we don't have any teak yet. So I think we've got pretty much the right amount of teak. 